Apia, the go-to insurance for retirees. Call 13 50 50. Get set, go. This is Without Bias. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Without Bias for another Tuesday evening across Australia on SEN. It's all thanks to Apia, proudly supporting Bowls Australia and right at home, the right care right at home. On tonight's program, we'll be speaking with Matt Flapper, who's going to be a part of the Melbourne Extreme side at the BPL, which gets underway in a week's time. We'll also be catching up with Val Febo to get all the inside word ahead of the Bowls Premier League. It's going to be another big show. So let's get straight to it. Matt Flapper, he is going to be a big, big force as part of the Bowls Premier League, part of the Melbourne Extreme side. And he joins me on the line. Matt, welcome to SEN. Uh, Julian, thanks, mate. Thanks for having me on board. Well, you're back for the BPL, the Melbourne Extreme. Let's start there. Tell us about the crew that you've got together for this season. Tell us about what you're most excited about for the Extremes campaign. Uh, a little bit of a new look uh, to the Extreme team uh, as we go into BPL 18, mate. It's uh, Kylie Whitehead for her first run, comes on board, and Ali Forsyth and myself again. So the old... Uh, the two old boys joined with uh, the new blood, Kylie. Um, she'll bring a level of excitement to the team and um, really looking forward, actually, to see what she can bring to the event. So um, just ready to go. Ready to go, mate. Not bad to just add a jackaroo into the mix as well. Not bad, I suppose, having that uh, as a free agent signing. It's great to see Kylie rewarded. She's uh, She's been a consistent player for a long time and um, obviously just, you know, probably on the cusp of getting a chance at, at this level, of, at, at, at this event more so than uh, than this level. But um, just she's a class act. She's a talent. She's been doing it for quite a while, and um, you know, I get to see her represent Victoria quite often, but never sort of got to play alongside her. So really looking forward to to seeing what she can bring. If yourself and Ali, what do you think is the best part of your partnership that you've been able to forge with him over the years? Probably versatility, I reckon. Just, um, you know, something's not working between us as a combination. We've uh, we've got the flexibility to change it up. Um, Ellie can lead, Ellie can skip. I think uh, the fire will be in the belly for, for Ellie going into this event. Um, he'll he'll, he'll want to do well and, and prove a point. And I think he's probably playing as good as he ever has. So um, that's another exciting aspect. But, yeah, just probably that flexibility that we know we can play any position. Um, if something's not working, change it up and have the confidence that it's going to work as well. You've been a part of the BPL for quite a long time now. You've seen it evolve. You've seen it in its early stages to where it is now. What's the biggest difference in your time from the first season you played to what you see today? Um, probably whilst the seriousness is still there, I think the level of enjoyment has, has risen. Um, when it was, you probably first went into it there's a bit of uncertainty on how you should conduct yourselves on the TV, I suppose, and, and just, um, you know, you just got to bring that level of excitement and passion to it. And, you know, at the end of the day, you're you're the ones that are out there bringing it to people's lounge rooms. And I think that's the most important thing, that you've got to show who you are, be natural in, you know, treat it like you're in a natural environment back at club level or, you know, um, at whatever level you play. But just bring that sort of extra 5% to, to those games because... There might be someone sitting at home watching it um, that has never played bowls before that thinks, yeah, this, this is pretty cool. I want to be a part of this. And you've got to sell the product to them. So I think that's what it's more about. And I think that happens now more so than it probably did when it first um, was launched. Everybody I've spoken to just loves this tournament. They they love it more than anyone else in, in, the, in the calendar as far as any of the other tournaments. Obviously, the you know international honours are, are massive, but... The, the biggest takeaway that I've gotten asking people is just the fun and the enjoyment and how much they get excited by the BPL. Why do you think that is? Oh, I think the TV aspect's got to be a part of it. Um, I think just obviously that the format, how quick it is, um, it's short, it's exciting, it's fun. Um, so the format in itself just brings that element to it um, before you even put a bowl down. So, and then... You know, you got to rely on the players that are involved to to bring that to the next level up again. And I think the ones that that are involved in it do that, um, which creates a pretty good spectacle. So for this season, what are you expecting as far as the competition around you? You've got a formidable trail in the Melbourne Extreme, but 
what have you made about what the other teams are doing? Um, look, it's probably it's probably not what the others are doing. It's probably what we've got to do. Um, we've we've been to the pointy end a couple of times. Uh, narrow losses in in finals, which is sort of they say it's a game of millimeters, and it can be at times. And um, you know, we've been on the raw end of that um, on two occasions, and sort of almost got there, but haven't. So the fire is in the belly to to uh, to certainly go that extra step. And I, I know that Ali would be in the same boat. And obviously Kylie on board now. She uh, she's a winner. She always wants to win, so um, she'll bring that level of confidence and attitude to our, our combination as well. So I um, I expect to you know I expect to be at the pointy end on on Friday afternoon. Matt Flappers with us is going to be part of the Melbourne Extreme at the BPL, which gets underway next week, of course, and we cannot wait for things to get underway up at Pine Rivers. The, the greens at Pine Rivers, Matt, what do you expect to be dealing with when you get up there? Uh, pretty similar to what we normally get. Um, greens will run around that sort of probably 14 to 16-ish. Um, we play all the preliminary rounds on the back green. Every rink provides its own challenges on that green, but certainly uh, allows you to, to play all the shots. And then you get to the TV, TV rink that... Uh, a little bit challenging in its own way. It probably depends on what time of night you play. Early on in the night, it might be a bit slower. As it heats up, it might be quicker or, or vice versa. So you just got to take it as it comes. But um, certainly uh, the greens don't play a factor. It's, um, you know, you just get out there, you do what you do and just embrace it all. So tell us, where did your bowls journey begin? When did you first start playing? Uh, yeah, through my dad um, when I was 11. So it feels like an eternity ago, mate, that, uh, when I first put a bowl down. But um, 11 years old at Creswick Bowling Club, just outside of Ballarat. That's where it all uh, started. Probably uh, never really got... Well, I got into it, obviously, as a junior. But when I first started, you couldn't actually play pennant competition because the rules were you had to be 16. But um, once I sort of turned 12 or 13, that rule changed and it became open. And that was the platform. Played all the other sports, but just uh, sort of just hovered back to bowls and and been very fortunate along the way. It's, it's been a long journey, but a, a very good one. And certainly thankful, thankful for everything that's come my way. A few highlights that come to mind? Yeah, obviously representing Australia, there's, there's nothing better than that. Uh, Commonwealth Games in 2014 in Glasgow um, to come away with a bronze medal probably from someone that never thought they'd get that opportunity to represent their country. Um, so that was that was massive in the in the context of, of my life, in my, my bowls career. Um, so play, yeah, probably played about 70 or 80 games for the country, which was, you know, putting that shirt on was always just added a level of excitement and, um, you know, just, just to be able to, to know that you're born green and gold is, is an amazing, amazing feat and, uh, you know, something I'm very, very proud of. Um, and you go to club level and, you know, just to, to enjoy club success with club mates. Uh, winning a premiership last year, we, we went all the way and we won a state tenant. And, you know, there's no better feeling than that, winning something of that magnitude alongside people that you spend six, eight months of the season playing alongside. So there's highlights along the way, mate, as, you know, as many athletes would say, but it, it, it's varying for me. It's, it's at the high end, playing for Australia, but also back at club level, just enjoying that success as well. Club-wise, what have you called home throughout your journey? Yeah, Ocean Grove now for... Uh, this. I'm in my 13th year there. Um, so I've just been the bowls coordinator here for 12 years and in the last 12 months taken up a new role, which is a GM of bowls development, so a bit more broader. Um, and we've we've got Tyson Cromie, who's a young up up and uh, coming Australian jackaroo. So he's a pathway jackaroo. He's now the bowls coordinator here. So he's sort of under my wing, and which is pretty exciting. But the club's going going great guns. We've got a big development coming in uh, probably the next 12 months, which will see two greens built under cover. So we'll uh, we'll create a facility here that's um, you know state of the art, as good as anything that'll. Uh, the, It'll be around there and hopefully attract some, some uh, an amazing events um, in future years that come to Ocean Grove. So uh, clubs going great. We've had a, we had a great season last year. So we've just about we've just entered our our 2023-24 uh, season, 
So looking forward to what that brings. And if anyone wants to become a part of Ocean Grove, how would they do so? Ring me. <laughs> uh, give me a call. Call in and come and see us, and uh, we'll get you going in the game. You can play as, as little amount of bowls or as much as you like. Um, it's a funny one uh, when, when a new member comes in and never played bowls before. Oh, I just want to play socially. I said, that's your attitude now. In three years, you'll be the club president. That's normally my sell to them. <laughs> How much success have you had getting them from the social point to being at that level? Uh, actually, yeah, we've had a few that have, uh, you know, really progressed quickly through the ranks, but probably not so much into the administration side, but uh, become very competent players that, um, you know, really fast track through the through the ranks of competition. And, you know, I think a uh, perfect example last year we had one of our players, Jen Lasseur, who's uh, a really, really uh, strong up-and-comer, and she went and won the novice singles in her second year of bowls at, at state level. So, um, you know, just really embraced it, got on the green and practice, 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 coached, and um, just showed what she's capable of in her second year of bowls by winning a state title, which, you know, it's always exciting to see. Well, we appreciate you spending some time with us, Matt, on SEN, and we wish you all the very best for the BPL, and... And good luck to Ocean Grove as well, doing some wonderful things. Thank you very much, mate. Thanks for the chat. Welcome back to Without Bias here on SN. It's all thanks to Apia, proudly supporting Bowls Australia and right at home, the right care, right at home. Well, let's get an in-depth preview now of the BPL, and I thought there's no better person to do so than the Communications and Partnerships Coordinator from Bowls Australia, a broadcaster in his own right, Val Febo, who joins us here on the line. Val, welcome. Thanks, Jules. How are you? Excited like everybody else. Only a week away from the BPL now. I know. I'm really looking forward to getting up to Pine Rivers up in Brisbane, uh, Queensland's Moreton Bay region. Um, just a little bit north of Brisbane in Bray Park, and it's going to be a wonderful event. It's the tournament's spiritual home, and we're going to see some big shots, some lights, some smoke, and uh, a lot of broadcasts as well. 24 hours of live broadcast from 4 to 10 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time on Fox and KO and Sky Sports NZ, as well as all the live streaming that you're going to see um, during the day as well. So there's plenty of bowls to whet your appetite with the world's best players as well. So what's new for this upcoming season? couple of new players. So we've got Rob McMullen for the Tasmania Tridents, former Australian singles champion. Kylie Whitehead, a ride at home jackaroo. She's going to be making her tournament debut for the Melbourne Extreme. Matty Flapper, who you just had on, he's back. He's ready to go and he's one of the tournament's uh, finest exponents. We love watching Matty Flapper drive and um, we've seen him break some jacks. We've seen him send him out to the roundabout there at, uh, at Club Pine Rivers and um, also Brett Wilkie, former Gold Coast Hawk. He is back uh, for the tournament as well. So looking forward to seeing him in action for uh, for the Club Hallensvale franchise. He's a former Jackaroo himself, and he's a very, very handy bowler. You mentioned the spiritual home of this tournament being uh, back once again, Pine Rivers. What makes it so special up there? Well, I think the fact that you did, that we did have the first tournament back there in, in, 20, uh, in 2013, it's been such a long time now, but... Um, the, the fans are so vocal, they're parochial, especially when the Moreton Bay Pirates walk out to some of those night session matches. It goes off. They've got cardboard cutouts of Alex Marshall with the goat horns, because, of course, he is the goat, Chris Rosans and Joe Edwards. And uh, any time any one of them does anything good on the green, that it doesn't have to be much, even they just have to set foot on the green, the the cheers are raucous and it's so loud it's so awesome and yeah when you're sitting in the thick of it and uh, and the pirates are doing well as well as some of all the other franchises as well tweeter uh, tweet heads always have a lot of uh, uh, a lot of fans there so do the sydney lions so i'm really looking forward to seeing what it what it's going to be like yet again because there always just seems to be some sort of innovation from such a wonderful club so let's break it down what we're going to see on the greens who are you most looking forward to and who's going to have the biggest impact do you think give us some of the x factors for this bpl in terms of the franchises the moama steamers they're the ones they're on fire they're, they've not missed a final series for a very long time i think it's been two years 
since they since they or two and a half years since they last missed the final series. When you've got Aaron Sheriff, a two time world champion from this year alone, Brian Best of the World singles champion just a couple of months ago, and then Cass Miller at the Australian Open champion. Uh, you know, what more can you say? It's such a wonderful lineup and I think all three of them are gonna have a pivotal part to play. The home team, the Morton Bay Pirates, they're gonna be very difficult to beat. Very, very impressed with what they do time and time again. Alex Marshall, he's not the GOAT for no reason, or he's the GOAT for uh, for a lot of reasons. And Joe Edwards, she's an absolute superstar in her own right. But then you've got Tweed Heads. They've won the tournament back-to-back um, in BPL uh, 12 and 13. Not to mention the Melbourne Pulse. They've won the last two events at Club Pine Rivers, so they are not to be discounted because it's the same trio of Alan Ryan, Barry Lester and Gary Kelly. So really looking forward to all of the teams combining, but uh, those ones in particular, I think if they just they might be the ones that uh, that can get the job done. I'm not sure though. Anything can happen at a BPL. I want a uh, question without no skill. I want to get three players from you that we need to circle and and really focus in on. Who do we need to keep an eye on as far Ooh. as individuals? Well, I think well Aaron Sheriff. He's a six-time MVP of this tournament. Um, low-hanging fruit, I know. Uh, Alex Marshall, another bit of low-hanging fruit. Um, but those two, they, they dished up a semi-final for the ages or a preliminary final for the ages at uh, BPL uh, 17 in February. And BPL 18, I think, is going to be no different. And from a female point of view, I think Alan Ryan, she's a superstar. We know what we're going to get from her, as well as Joe Edwards, Rebecca Van Ash, Kelsey Cottrell. So there are a few of the players that I think you can really look out for. What about couple of players that we may not know quite yet, but you think they're going to break out and have a big tournament? Rob McMullen is one for uh, for the Tasmania Trident. So I think, uh, you know, he's an Australian singles champion. He's getting a, a, a shot to, to play at this prestigious tournament. It's one that a lot of players love and want to play in. And Rob gets his shot here. So looking forward to seeing what he can do under the lights. And uh, he, he brings a lot of X factor. He's not a, afraid to play an aggressive game. I think Cody Packer, he's a jackaroo, but he has played, he's in some supreme form. Just won the Australian singles title uh, a couple of weeks ago at the Nationals, and he's playing really, really well. Had a great BPL last time out, as he did uh, at Pine Rivers last year. So looking forward to seeing him in action, um, as well as a lot of others. And I think uh, Michael Sims for Tasmania as well, Blake Nan for Perth. Um, so there's plenty of players out there that I think are, that are going to make a name for themselves. And some some performances go into folklore at the Bowls Premier League, and I'm interested to see who will go into folklore at this event. You've seen this competition grow over its journey. What makes this, for a fan and for someone like yourself who covers this sport, what makes this tournament so special compared to all the others? Because the one thing that I've constantly taken away from speaking to all the players is how much fun that they have. But from an outside point of view, for those of us watching on, what makes this so different and so special? There's always something happening. So you get a shot clock. You've got 30 seconds to, to make your decision and roll. That's it. You can't you can't think or fixate on things too much. Things have to be done. They've got to be nailed straight away. You've got to be constantly thinking. Things change on a dime. The power play also makes you think about tactics because you get double shots if you win the end. So nothing is decided really until the end. And you could be the better team. You could win 10 out of the 12 ends and still lose the match in a tiebreaker because of the power plays. So it, it always offers up something different. And, um, and you know, there's been some significant ups, upsets because of that. And I just think anyone can win. And the teams are so evenly matched. The top team could have had, you know, could go undefeated throughout an entire tournament and then lose to the bottom side and get absolutely smashed by the bottom side. That's how close it is. And, you know, you see teams that finish on the bottom one year, but it's because they've lost 10 tie breaks out of their 18 matches. So, you know, all the teams are always thereabouts. And I think that's why it's fun. There's always something happening. There's noise, there's lights, there's smoke machines when they come out. So it's always, you know, it's a bit of fun for the bowlers and um, it's a lot of fun for the fans because they don't have to be too quiet when the bowlers are on the mat. Um, uh, you know, they can really enjoy themselves and they can express themselves as well. That's if you're listening on your a fan, you're thinking about going along. What would make this a different night experience or, I guess, game night experience compared to your usual bowls tournaments? You mentioned a couple of the factors there, the, the lights, the smokes machines. Well, give us a bit of an idea of what we can expect. 
you can expect music. We play music just right throughout the match, um, just to keep the feel up as well as the, you know, that you've got everything really. There's food, there's drinks. The crowd is loud. It gets absolutely raucous there. As I said before, Pine Rivers is parochial. And I, I, look, I could not encourage anybody to get down there more than than what it is at the BPL. They are just absolutely sensational what they do at Pine Rivers. So get down. It's free entry. Go down if you're in the area or even just fly up. It doesn't matter. It's, it's a wonderful event. And um, yeah, you, you will not be disappointed. I'm going to put you on the spot. I want who's going to win and who's going to be the player of the tournament, male and female? Oh, all right. Well, we, we have the all-star team that uh, that is selected at the end. So look, I'll, I'll give, I think I've done my predictions and I, look, I think Aaron, Aaron chair is always hard to go past, but um, who else are we going for? I think Joe Edwards in the all-star team as well. And I think Alex Marshall, the way he played at, uh, at BPL 17 and, uh, and the World Championships, I reckon he's warming up to something special. So they're my MVP and uh, the All-Star team. And then the winner, I think I'm going to be very boring and go with the defending champs, the Miami Seamers. Look forward to seeing what comes on the BPL, of course, next week and uh, going to a big 2024. It's great to have you on the program. Uh, you're a star, Jules. Thank you very much and enjoy the BPL, everyone. That's Val Febo joining us, the communications coordinator at Bowls Australia, who does a lot of work in helping put this show together each and every week. So it's great to be able to speak to him and get the inside goss ahead of the Bowls Premier League. We're back again next week, so make sure that you join us wherever you can across SCN. And don't forget to download the podcast as well. Just search for Without Bias wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Julian Marcus. Thanks for your company. I'll talk to you again next week.